Hi, everybody. This is Sage Lewis, and today I'm with Stacy Silverstein, the director of food service at Alkanox. How are you, Stacy? Doing great. I am so excited to talk to you. Um, today, we're going to talk about fryers in restaurants. Um, yes. And this is actually something near and dear to my heart because I spent many years at the front oh. of the house in restaurants. And I don't think I've ever seen a fryer yeah. cleaned. Yeah, that is the trick. <laughs> that is the secret sauce. So you're saying people clean fryers? Well, they're supposed to. Oh. So, um, and and these days, what's happened is with the the grand switch about a decade ago over to the preferred zero trans fat oils, those oils spit off a lot more uh, residue than your traditional saturated fats um, used to. So it makes it harder to clean. So not only do you have your, you know, you've all, we've all been to restaurants where we know the cooking oil was head turned, mm. right? Um, I can distinctly remember after I'd started working at Alkanox and learned about fryer cleaning that I, I went to this little fish fry place at the beach that we were going to every year and it was amazing. Like we, we made a mission to go back to this place every single year. And we went one the next year and it was, it was terrible. It terrible. was off. It was, you could smell it. You could taste it. You could see that the oil stuck, you know? And, and I was like, oh my God, they're not cleaning their fryer. Like I knew too much, <laughs> right. To walk into a restaurant anymore without knowing these things. And we never went back. Wow. And, and unfortunately, this happens, especially your independence, um, as well as your chains. This this happens. You can lose customers in the blink of an eye because the quality of the product is not consistent. It's not it's not good. Um, and so as much as we think it's weird to think, oh, cleaning can impact customer satisfaction, which can then impact uh, your revenue. It's it's a total direct line. So cleaning that fryer, as we say, down to the metal clean becomes really critical. Um, and that's who we are. We're critical cleaning experts. So we, we started in the lab and we, and we, we, we go all over the place. Um, and Alkanox PFS is really an amazing product for fryer cleaning because it not only attacks your classic baked on carbon, the black stuff you see, um, but there's also this like sticky, uh, clear yellowish residue that you'll see that and that is an oil degrading residue. So the, the carbon buildup will create your off aromas, your off flavors. Um, the color of the oil will change, right? And that's how a lot of restaurants know when to change it. Um, but your, your, the sticky stuff will, will kill your oil life. So you'll burn through your own food costs. If, if frying is a big part of your food costs, then your, your oil will, will just go quick. So cleaning the fryer, um, it helps with your flavor profile of whatever you're cooking. It helps with your, your oil life and, made, and, and keeping your costs of food um, and your pantry down. It also helps maintain the equipment. So we've gotten so many calls. Oh my, I, I've been burning through um, fryer maintenance. You know, we're bringing in all this, this, these service calls to maintain these fryers. What can we do? And, and we came in and, and with routine cleaning um, and cleaning of the oil, cleaning of the fryer, we, we work on the fryer, on the equipment. Um, you can bring down your maintenance costs as well. So there's a lot of benefits um, to, to doing this. Cleaning is not a fun job. Cleaning the fryer, as you can guess, guess, having worked in it for so long is the least favorite job in a kitchen. Cause it's nasty. I mean, it's, it's rough, rough. It's like the, the most, the biggest pain point, right. In, in a restaurant and no one wants to do it. Um, but I, and I've been in restaurants where it is obvious no one did it. And now they're at a point of like, major reaction. They got an inspector coming in. They've got to get the thing clean. I've 
talk to people who've told me they've taken like drill bits to the fryer. It's so bad, which is crazy because that'll just kill the fryer. Um, and Alkanox PFS is a, um, a non-caustic product. So it's not going to harm the metal. It's going to be safer on aluminum. It's going to be safer on the workers. I, I it, it's like tails from the fryer, right? So I was once in a restaurant and we had a bucket of Alkanox PFS solution um, ready to go. And the cook, the cooker who did, did the fryer cleaning as well, he sticks his bare hand in the Alkanox solution. He's like, oh my God, no rash. <laughs> the other stuff gives me a rash and like burns, like people get chemically burned from from cleaners, right? And unfortunately, the food service industry has historically thrown a lot of dangerous hazardous chemicals at, at their workers uh, who have to interface with them to clean the floors, the walls, the equipment. Um, and it's just not necessary, right? So you, you've got a worker safety piece here you've got environmental safety, you don't need to neutralize with vinegar, some stuff that, that your traditional like fryer cleaners were so alkaline, so caustic, that you had to neutralize with vinegar in order to safely dispose of them down the drain. Yeah, so now then you add in a cost for, for the vinegar and you add in an extra step into your into your operations process. And so it's, it, it's crazy. Um, but Alkanox can really streamline that piece of it. Um, PFS, by the way, means powered for food service. Oh. And it really is, it's a great product and it, it can be used not just in the fryer, but for all different applications within the commercial kitchen. And, and what I like to tell people is cost save on multiple ways, right? So Alkanox PFS is sold in concentrate. So a little goes a long way. You, you use as much as you need. And you can also throw things into the fry pot um, while it's soaking or simmering. A lot of people I know, they'll, they'll let it soak overnight. Uh, so they don't have to pay a worker uh, to stand over your traditional, you know, boil out. This is not a boil out. This is a whole different thing. It's a soak or simmer. So you, you start with hot tap water and throw it in the fryer, make the solution, and you can put your baffle filters, your frying utensils, whatever you want, right in the fryer. So it serves multiple purposes at the same time. And then all you have to do, um, scrub a little bit before and after to kind of loosen the, the grime. And then, and then rinse really, really well. So like a, if you think of like salad greens and how they're triple rinsed or triple washed, that's what we want to see with Alkanox PFS because it's a high foamer. So it's there, it, it, if you, if you, I've seen it, if you put the detergent in the fryer first and then put the water in, you will get a mountain of foam. <laughs> so it's much better to put the water in first, fill it up, but beyond that, that line that you get, what, you know, you see a line of where the oil ends, go above that line, then put the detergent in and then stir it up. Um, and you won't get the mountain of foam. <laughs> so just little tips I've learned in the, you know, almost dozen years that we've been in food service and, and the fryers, what got us here, you know, there was a chain that was having a real, real tough time with their changed their oil couldn't get off this residue for the life of them. And they, they asked their oil um, manufacturer in, in the test kitchen, how they, how they cleaned and, and they recommended our product. So it's uh, a really great thing for the food service industry from a safety perspective, from an effectiveness perspective and an efficiency piece. Um, so you can, you can do so many things. So I tell people, you know, if the, the detergency is not spent, once the fryer's clean, dump that on the floor, mop your floor and push it down your floor drain. And it's totally safe. And it's safe on, um, on the drains, on your uh, grease trap, assuming, assuming your grease trap is well-maintained. Alkanox PFS is a, a great emulsifier. Uh, if you think of like salad dressing and mixing it up, that's an emulsification. So assuming your grease trap is good, you're good. Um, and then all you have to do is follow up with water, just water, 
no vinegar, just rinse it thoroughly because if you leave it there, it'll get like slippery, like, a, like an ice rink. So you want to make sure you rinse thoroughly. Um, but you can do, I've, I've gone around stores, uh, back of restaurants with a spray bottle, like I'll dip it in the fryer. Um, and we go around and we look for pain points. So um, backsplashes are classically filthy. Um, and so you can, you can spray it on if the water is hot um, or the surface is hot, it'll go much quicker. Um, if you're in the back of the house and it's pre-service and you open up the, like the warming oven, right? And it's usually kind of not terrible, but grimy. Um, I, I've seen the, the oil just sheet right off because your, your oven's already up to temp. So the metal super hot and you're coming at it with a detergent that works uh, with, with heat or time as, as your sort of levers of cleaning. So the hotter the temperature of the surface in the water, uh, the longer the soak time that you give it, the contact time, uh, the better the clean. And, you know, people say, well, how do I repair this fryer? It's, you know, basically done with it. And it might take a few rounds, right? We've seen people who've just worked at it, worked at it, and eventually you can restore it. I've, I've seen it. I've, I've heard the testimonials over the years. It's, it's insane. People have come up to me um, at conventions and they say, I've been cleaning fryers for 40 years and I've never seen a better product. And I, what do I know? I've never, I'm not, I'm not like you. I've never worked in the back of the house. I've done waitressing, but I've never worked in the back of the house. So I can't speak from my own experience, but these folks are, are saying it. And, and I, uh, it's impressive. It's a really impressive product. So. Wow. I had so many questions and you answered so many of them that you have obviously told the story before. I love it. So I get pretty passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can use it. You can use it on a lot of things in, in a kitchen. Yeah. Is there anything on a kitchen you shouldn't use it on? So I would say with aluminum, you should rinse promptly. That's what I would say, or else you wind up getting that dull kind of whitish look. It will clean the dirt off of it. And it won't, the big thing with aluminum is it's not going to corrode the aluminum. A lot of products out there will eat holes in aluminum and Alconox will not. Um, you just need to rinse promptly. Uh, and I would say, you know, Alconox PFS is designed the way we work, let me just back up at Alconox Inc. is we design detergents to meet to meet the needs of, of attacking certain residues, working on certain types of surfaces, and based on how people are cleaning. So if someone said, you know, I have um, this uh, rice cooker or um, a rethermalizer or at something that had, you know, a big dairy buildup, starch buildup, like yogurt machines, things like that in a restaurant. I wouldn't recommend Alconox PF. I'd recommend one of our other products. So I would say Alconox PFS is quite capable and competent at attacking most standard restaurant dirt, right? Things you find on the walls, on the floors, in the back concrete pads, um, drive throughs, a lot of it's oil, right? A lot of it's that just sort of restaurant oils and dirt. Um, when you get more specific, um, we have other products. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So how often do you think you should clean your fryer? So that depends on what the restaurant is doing for their operations and their procedures. So the goal is to make things easy and fit in nicely to their standard operating procedures. So if, if a chain or, or an independent uh, is cleaning on a schedule and that's their habit, then we want to fit into their habit. You know, some people are like, oh, we clean every week and they might have the volume. They know enough that they clean every week because they're so high volume that they have to, and that might be appropriate. Um, other chains are really much more about measuring their oil life. So they will, they put a dipstick in, they, they use different ways of measuring oil life. And so they wait until the oil is spent, discard it, and then clean. 
So it really depends. I would say as long as it fits within the culture of that restaurant and how they clean, as long as they're cleaning is the important part in in a routine basis. Because I think what happens is you bump into places where you get a, you get a manager who is all about cleaning. They're so good. They get promoted and someone else comes in and that person ain't about cleaning. And so a lot of it comes from the, from the leadership, right. And, and the culture of the, the individual store and the larger organization. And when you prioritize cleaning as part of your, um, your customer service, your customer satisfaction, your worker satisfaction, and and your equipment maintenance and bringing your costs down, then I think it becomes a priority. You know, we had one person tell us that like, they came in and they thought the equipment was brand new. And they, they couldn't believe it. And it actually, I know this sounds corny, but like it made them happier to be at work. Right? Because they were just in a nicer work environment. It was like, it was clean. It was, you know, it felt better to them. So I know it's like not the direct impact, but it can be quite impactful for everyone involved. Yeah. So like, I think these, like these mom and pop restaurants, you know, they, Mm -hmm. they, they don't have the backing of a big uh, company. They don't really know, like, you know, they just maybe started a restaurant because it was their dream and yeah. they don't like, so, you know, if you, if you're talking to a person like that, like is, is once like is once a month, not enough, too much, a good place to start. I would say once a month is a, a decent place to start because your, your oil can go from, from high use or low use. So if the oil sits around and it's not used, then it can spoil as well. Hmm. So you want to not, right. It's that balance of not losing customers like that other place had lost me years ago. Um, and so, you, you know, I think being aware of, of how your fryer is being used, how it plays into what you're cooking. You know, we've had people from the food trucks, um, approach us because they want to keep things clean and they're, you know, sporadic, right? A lot of the food trucks are, are high volume on the weekend, right. Or in the seasonal and they want to, they want to keep it going. So I would say, you know, once a month would be a good idea. Um, assuming then you're discarding your oil, other places they'll work where they are perpetually recycling their oil. So you have to test it. Um, it's still a good idea. You can to clean the fryer um, as well as things like the drip pan underneath the fryer where the oil gets um, drained into. There are just lots of opportunities. Once you start looking around a restaurant, even just around the fryer, you know, if you think of the filters, you know, uh, they can become fire hazards if they get gummed up too much. So making sure your, your environment is safe is also quite important. So, you know, some of these places like bars, you know, they're, they're Mm -hmm. open super late. Yeah. People are tired. Right. If you can just get into a system. So you're suggesting maybe at the end of a shift, uh, what yeah. clean it out, empty it and then and then put- yeah we have we have all these job aids to help people with that stuff um, but a lot of people depending on their how they run their shifts some people prefer they'll have it drain out at night so the night shift will kind of close with draining it out you know when it's time to clean the fryer and fill it up with the detergent solution and then leave yeah Right. And then the morning crew comes in and they finish it. Right. Yeah. And this is really different from the way it, it's typically done with boil outs where you're, you have to have a, a human watch the pot from boi- boiling because it's a hazard if it boils over. Right. And it's a chemical hazard too. So you're eliminating two, two main hazards of the kitchen um, by using this. Yeah, in in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the that's the suggested way of doing it is just kind of letting it soak overnight, huh? Yeah. I mean, depending, you know, other people like to simmer. You could start with a simmer, get the water super hot, shut it off, and leave. 
Um, you got to know your staff. You got to know who's working and who's doing the cleaning. You got to train them appropriately and, and evaluate the training, make sure they're doing it right. Um, you know, measuring is really important. We make Alkanox PFS in both a, a four pound unit, which needs to be poured and measured and then um, eight ounce packet. So eight ounces is enough to clean a small fryer. Like if you think of like a French fry fryer, uh, you'd need two packets or 16 ounces to clean your, your medium size open cook pots and then more depending on the size. There's large, large fryers, right? So there's um, like 110 pound. By pound, I mean pounds of shortening. That's traditionally how, how fryers are talked about in, in volume of, of shortening oh. or weight. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So somebody that's just starting out, like, you know, these, these, you got these cool little packets and yeah. And so, yeah. And they're not already measured out, you know, so the beauty of the four pound box is that, you know, if you're going to really take it and run with Alkanox PFS, you'll, it's a more cost-effective way of purchasing yeah. and you'll get more out of it because you'll start to you bump into people who've just been like, oh my God, this stuff's amazing. And I use it everywhere. You know, they put it in the urinal, they put it down the drain, they do that, you know, they do all kinds of, stuff. Um, and then they sort of just have figured out, you know, they use it on smallware, they throw up, fill a three compartment sink, you know, even people who in the pizza industry, people who clean their conveyor belts, um, like if they run their own little, little pizza shop and they have a conveyor pizza oven and they clean it themselves, they'll take off the chain, roll it up, put it in a garbage can, fill it and put Alkanox PFS in and sit, let it sit overnight. Same concept. Yeah. It's really just a great, a great hard surface cleaner. So um, it's going to work on many, many applications. Yeah. So yeah. you said like an eight ounce pouch or packet was a small fryer, but like, let's take that that garbage can idea where you, 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 you took your, you know, your conveyor belt and put it in there. Like, is yeah. that like, is it a certain number of gallons of water that you like, you know? Yeah. So it's a very, very simple recipe. It's two and a half uh, tablespoons per gallon of water or one and a quarter ounces. Huh. So it's, you just measure up, right? That's all. So we just try to make it easy to avoid people having to do math. So we say, okay, eight ounces, is for a good, uh, like a 35 pound, yeah. 40 pound fryer. And then like kind of that 50 to 70 pound range, you'd need 16 ounces. Yeah. Oh, see, I, I could, yeah, I could do that. Like, you know, I know yeah. you guys are very precise. I mean, you have your, you know, your critical cleaning experts, but right. like a, what you said, two and a half tablespoons per gallon yeah. of water. I know what a tablespoon is. But, yeah, yeah right. I could do that. Exactly. That's like good. I use it at home. I'll I'll fill my sink with it, and and you can like from a. It's we're not necessarily a company that really uh, supplies to households, but you know you can cross over a little. Um, I'll fill my. I have a white sink that gets etched dirty and all this stuff, and so I'll fill it uh, with hot water, put in Alkanox PFS, and then even add a little bleach. It won't harm that, that that combination won't harm just because I want to whiten the sink with the bleach, but I want to clean off the grime with the Alkanox PFS. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned this because I didn't know if I was allowed to talk, but my wife asked me before this interview, she says, ask her if we can put it in the air fryer. As long as you can rinse properly, yeah. that's all. That's it. As yeah. You can remove parts yes. like yes. Like I have one of those, um, the microwaves with the exhaust over the stove yeah, thing. Yeah. And there's those tiny little filters you can pull out that are covered in yellow. We yeah. cook a lot and I'll throw those in the sink. Um, with not the with the bleach though. Yeah. Just with the PFS. Yeah. So I'll just throw those in the sink and then literally it's shiny new, shiny new, shiny. I, I wow. should take pictures. I'm, I'm, wow. I should take pictures. Um, yeah. So how does a person get this Alkanox PFS? So if you go to our Alkanox food service site, alkanoxfoodservice.com, it's very complicated. Um, <laughs> and you can find a, a dealer or a rep. So we, we sell uh, regionally as well as through a couple websites. Um, so they would have to go there and like kind of look up where they're at in the country and find a, the right 
group to purchase from. But it's easy. Yeah. Just call up a, a, a dealer and they'll, they'll hook you up. Yeah. And if you have trouble, you can always just contact us at cleaning at alkanox.com. Yeah. This has been really helpful. <laughs> I could talk about fryers. Know, <laughs> you love fryers. <laughs> You're like, yeah. you're a passionate about cleaning fryers. You know what it is? My background's actually in public health. I don't know if you knew that, but um, so the worker safety thing really speaks to me. I think, you know, that, that to me, it's like making workers, forcing workers to be exposed to hazardous chemicals in the workplace like that when it's not necessary, really, it's just upsetting. You know, it's, it's yeah. how do we, how can we change this habit, this culture of, oh, I'm going to throw the nastiest stuff at it and that'll work. And it doesn't have to be that way. You know, you can find stuff that is quite effective and a bit of more of a sophisticated formulation, which is what our stuff is. Um, and it'll, it'll work great without a lot of those hazards. The alcohol, I would recommend, and I say that, and I always wear gloves when I use it because it it is so good at degreasing that it will take the oils out of your skin. Yeah. So people who don't use gloves get really intense dishpan hands. But that's the ex that's the extent of it. So wear wear gloves. You know, if you're going to be in a spot where there's splattering, throw goggles on. But it's not. You know, you don't have to suit up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's super cool. Well, yeah. I hope this helps people and uh, get some more fryers clean because I do love the product of a good clean fryer, you know, like a good French fry out of a clean fryer. Totally. You taste the difference. You yeah. totally can taste the, you literally can. Yes. 100%. Um, well, do you have anything else you want to mention about fryers? I mean, you covered a lot. Lot. It's I like 12 it. years doing trade shows, Vontra. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be so. cathartic to get it out, to tell the story. Not there. Not to there spread in the, world the good now. word, the good, the information about getting a clean fryer. I would say, you know, it's it's really just do your research, find the right products that meet your needs, and and you know, don't be afraid to take a product like this and and test it out in other ways. Um, because it's going to become more of a, almost like a lean procurement concept as well, um, where you, you take this one product and all of a sudden you're applying it to many different places around inside the, the kitchen, back of the house, the front of the house, the exterior facilities. Um, and, and it really can go a long way to bring down your inventorying of many chemicals um, which I think is, is brilliant. You know, a lot of places, you know, if you walked into a restaurant depot, a home depot, you know, any of these places, and it's just the, the cleaning aisle is just covered with many products and they'll, you know, everyone will try to sell you a product for this use and that use, and they're different products. And that's not how we operate. You know, we're really a, a lot leaner than that. Um, in, in what we're asking people to do like take, take this product and you can make a, a paste and put it in drive through pad right and scrub it or power wash it and you're cleaning your your drive throughs you know or you know that area where it, if you do a lot of frying and they drag out the oil um there's always like a a kind of a a lane of oil yeah. right through the back what they call the back concrete pad again you know you can clean that and and i've I've seen it happen. I've, I've, I've seen photos. I've yeah. heard the stories. Um, you know, it's a lot of the dishwashers in restaurants are super quick. Uh, but but what happens is, you know, you've been to a restaurant where you look at something and you're like, oh, this is dirty, you know? Yeah. So if you do a pre-soak, let's say you have an Alkanox bin, I recommended uh, to a restaurant chain to do this, you know, they were bumping into problems with their dishwasher. And while Alkanox PFS cannot be used in a dishwasher, um, you could do a pre-soak. You know, you set up a basin with a solution and, you know, you, you throw your silverware, you know, if you're using metal silverware, you throw your silverware in the pre-soak and then put it in the dishwasher. And so you're going to just have that extra cleaning time and contact time. Yeah. Yeah. 
lots of ways. That's cool. And I um, know it's cool stuff. It really truly is. Um, really? And I love the idea that you're like open to experimenting with it, trying it, not to be afraid of it. And, right. But you did mention not in the dishwasher. And is that because of the <laughs> foaming? Yeah, totally. It's, we have other products, we have a product called Alcajet that's really good for like your under the counter home, home dishwashers, but um, restaurant uh, grade dishwashers are a whole other animal. Yeah. Um, so that's, don't ever put it in the dishwasher. It will, <laughs> as we say, for those who remember, it will be the Lawrence Welk show. Like it will be a, a foam, a foam city. <laughs> like we'll get a call, be like, can this call, you know, what happened? I'm like, oh God. Oh, <laughs> So that's the big warning of the, of that's the, the show. Big warning. Don't put it in the dishwasher unless you want yeah. to be on the, I mean, I guess you could do a TikTok video. Maybe you could <laughs> <laughs> go viral. Yeah. The foam. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I would say, um, add it after you put the water in so you don't get the mountain of foam. Um, the foam is there for a purpose. You know, it helps with contact time and surface cleaning. So it's, it's, it's designed as a high foamer for a reason, yeah. uh, but it has to be thoroughly rinsed. So people worry, oh, is it going to stay in the food? If you thoroughly rinse, yeah. um, you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you kind of scrub it afterwards when you're rinsing or just rinse? Depends on how dirty the surface is. So if it's a really dirty fryer, after you drain the detergent solution out, you can take a scrub brush and the tools are also really important. We don't manufacture um cleaning tools, but there are some really good ones out there that are specific for fryers. So I would say, you know, having those right tools are really important because fryers, there's a lot of nooks and crannies, depending on the types of fryer you have, like, especially like a tube fryer, really challenging to clean. Um, and even like the back of a fryer, there's like a, an exhaust thing, very hard to clean. Um, so people who cleaning verticals is challenging. You can take uh, rags, dip it in the detergent solution and drape it on those vertical surfaces while you're soaking the fryer as well. Hmm. Yeah. And then you're kind of just like allowing the contact surface, you know, the, the time and then you rinse it off. But yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to tell us about this. It's really pretty awesome. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I hope we can uh, talk again because uh, I'd yeah. like to know more about things you can clean in a, in a kitchen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Thank you so much, Stacey. All right. Take it easy. Bye now. Bye-bye.